So for the past two months, I've been in an intense period of focus on my business and life. It's not to say that I was coasting, but I wasn't growing as fast as I wanted to. And that was a reflection of how much effort I was putting in. So I felt like I was going through the motions. And while I was showing up, I didn't really feel like I was doing enough to push the business to where it needed to be. So I set a goal for this year and I knew that that goal would require a better version of what I was bringing to the table. So in September, I decided to enter a period known as monk mode. And during this period, I was going to completely focus on myself, my family, and my business. So in this video, I'm going to explain what is monk mode, why did I do it, who should do it, how to do it, and my results from the past two months, which are pretty damn shocking. Hey guys, if you're new to this channel, my name is Dan. I make videos on how to improve your health and your life. And I've owned a gym for 10 years. I sold it in 2018. And now I help high achieving entrepreneurs get into their best shape and become better human beings. So new videos come out every single week. Subscribe and let's grow together. On July 4th, 1845, a man found himself restless and in need of inspiration. So he went out to carve a new life in nature. He knew it was the time to be alone. So he settled in the forest on the shore of a pond and built himself a tiny little cabin in Massachusetts. He wanted to get away from the rat race of manufacturing and commerce. So he lived simply. He did his best to survive without any money. So he foraged, he grew crops, and did what he could to get what he could from the pond itself. The point was to cultivate himself. In his own words, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, he said in his now famous novel. That man was Henry David Thoreau, and that novel turned out to be Walden, which is one of the most influential writings in American history. And this was one of the first times the concept of monk mode was documented. So what is monk mode? It's taking a definite period of time from a week to about six months to focus with unusual intensity on your goals while abstaining from distraction and self-defeating activities. The purpose is to double down on important activities that take you towards your goal and abstaining away from behaviors that take you away from it and do this for a short period of time where you can complete it. So why would anyone choose to do monk mode in the first place? Your big ideas and decisions come from a combination of stillness and the ability to dedicate hours to the process. A goal is simply a problem to be solved. So the idea is to give yourself more time to stare it down and take actions towards achieving it. Focus can only come from getting away from distractions and setting boundaries on time. What we want to do is we want to create an environment where all the chips are set up in a way where we can achieve the intention that we desire. So monk mode is a period of time where you trade the shallow for the deep, for a good cause, which is your self-development. It's what Cal Newport says in his book, Deep Work. If you service low impact activities, therefore you're taking away time you could be spending on higher impact activities. It is a zero sum game. Now you could be entering monk mode for a variety of reasons. The very first one would be to finish a particular project. Another one could be to get past a plateau or get out of a rut. The other one could be to go deeper into an activity than you ever have before. Or you could be wanting to get back into something that you've been neglecting or to form new habits and get away from things that you've been complacent in. And who is monk mode for? It's for anyone who's looking to make a major leap in life. It's for the entrepreneur who wants to exponentially grow his business like myself. It's for the creator who wants to grow their audience like myself. It's for anyone who is willing to trade their quick pleasures so they can reach a new level as a human being. So how do you do monk mode? So there are about four pillars to creating a significant monk mode period in your life. The very first pillar is going to be approach. The second pillar is gonna be avoid. The other pillar is gonna be setting rules. And the other one is gonna be setting a deadline. And I'm gonna go through each and every one of these. So approach means that you're gonna be doing certain actions to take you towards the goal that you set. That's the other part of approach where you're gonna be setting an intention of a goal that you are gonna be hitting during this time time period. So every single one of your actions leads towards 
hitting that particular goal. Remember what we talked about in the very beginning about deep work, when you're really focused in on a particular goal, it's like a magnifying glass that is under the sun and all you do is just point towards it and it just like burns it to the point where you end up achieving it. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna put maximum focus into what we are doing. So that's what approach is. I'll give you some examples of the approach goals. It could look like meditating every single day. It could look like working out every single day. It could be making sure that you're getting a 15 minute walk. It could be reading. It could be making sure that you're just eating the types of foods that you need to eat to maintain focus and energy for the rest of the day. In my case, it could be drinking water, making sure that you're doing that on a regular basis. We want to set up things that we want to do or habits that we want to do that would line our energy and line our performance up so we can achieve the goal that we set for ourselves. So next we come to avoid. We want to set these certain vices that we have that would take us away or distract us from the goal that we're trying to achieve. My particular things that I was avoiding was marijuana and alcohol. I was doing these ones on occasion, but I just decided that I didn't need it for this phase in this period of my life, so I got rid of it. The other one that I did was getting rid of the phone uh, first thing in the morning, and I replaced that with reading. What you wanna do is you wanna create all these lists of certain habits that you have and essentially stay away away from those habits and replace them with the good ones that you want to set. And along with that, you want to create rules around all of these things that you are doing. You want to create very specific rules. It could be, let's just say it's like you go on the phone in the morning, you want to get rid of that. You say specifically to yourself that you are not going to be going on the phone first thing in the morning. You're going to be putting it in the bathroom or in another room and you're not going to be touching it for the first hour. You want to get that specific for every single one of your rules that you have towards your approach and your avoid goals. And lastly, we have deadlines. You don't want to have this period open-ended. We're, We're not, not fucking robots. robots. We want to have a deadline for when we are going to be stopping monk mode. And the reason why we want to do that is because it gives you a light at the end of the tunnel. It allows you to see that there is an end to all of this discipline. And if you want to continue it on after that, totally cool. But this is what makes the process sustainable and doable in the end. So what we're trying to do is we're committing to a new lifestyle standard in order to achieve the goal that we set for ourselves. We want to line everything up in our environment to make that achievement of the goal possible. And I'm not going to get into the plans in which to achieve those goals or whatever. You probably have your certain ideas of what you would do or what it would take to hit a certain goal. And I'll leave that to you. But what I'm talking about is lining up the environment because as James Clear says in Atomic Habits, environment is the invisible hand that shapes our results. And when he's talking about environment, he's not talking about all the stuff that's around you, so to speak. He's also talking about your internal environment as well. So as I said in the beginning of this video, I am about two months into my six month monk mode journey. And the results are absolutely shocking. I didn't think that this would actually happen this quick. So my approach goals were to increase the income inside of my business. It was to increase my social media reach. I wanted to do those things while I was being a great husband to my wife and a great dad to my daughter. So what happened during that time was incredible. In terms of my income, my income grew by a factor of 70% during the two months that I have been in monk mode so far, and I'm just beginning right now. In terms of my social media reach, my Twitter account blew up from 215K to 297,000 people right now. My LinkedIn uh, social media blew up from 2K to 48K people that are currently following me. Uh, during that time, I actually had one of my most viral pieces of content. It was on Twitter. It was a thread called Things I Know at 42 That I Wish I Knew at 22. Probably gonna do a video on that at some point. That particular thread got 24 million impressions, which is the most impressions that I've ever had so far. Because you're watching this, it actually pushed me to start making YouTube videos. In the last month, my subscriber count has gone up about a thousand. Uh, 2023 is going to be really the year where I really focus in on YouTube. And again, I'm, I'm just beginning. I'm just getting started. So a couple of things that I was avoiding, like I said before, was alcohol and weed and just anything that was a quick pleasure that would help me 
so to speak, de-stress myself. And what I found when I gave up both of those things, even though I was doing it on occasion, was the fact that a lot of times we use these substances to de-stress ourselves when they do the complete opposite. They eventually bring more stress, they numb out the emotion, only for the emotion to come back a little bit harder, and they also may have a chance of increasing anxiety. So when I gave up the crutches, so to speak, of drugs and alcohol, what I found was my emotions and the things that I was feeling and the things that I wasn't necessarily dealing with, even though I was doing it maybe like once a week. So when I gave up those particular uh, vices, I started to get more in touch with myself and I have a lot better of a relationship with myself. And during that time, I've been journaling every single day. This is actually a sticker from my daughter. Thank you. That process itself and meditating and, and getting away from all these things that would just like numb myself, it had just brought me to a greater level of awareness that I would not have had if I would had those substances, if I was currently using them in my life. So there's something to be said about going all in on yourself. And when I like to look at success, I like to think about, about it as like a brisk walk or maybe a brisk jog. And you couple that in with a couple of sprints. And monk mode to me is a total sprint towards the goals that you set for yourself. What it does is it sheds away the unimportant for the important. It lines up your environment for you to succeed. And it gives you time and space to focus on bringing the reality into fruition that you set for yourself. I'm about two months in into my monk mode journey. I have about four months left and I'm looking forward to seeing exactly the rest of the results that come with this. And I love just doing this in general because it makes life so simple. It simplifies the process of life for me because basically the only thing I'm working on is my business and being there for my family. I love the results again, can't complain. So what about you? Have you wanted to ever do a process of monk mode? Have you ever wanted to get rid of your vices and just go all in on the goals that you set for yourself? Or do you not agree? That's cool too. If you don't agree with me and you don't think you think this is a little bit too extreme, that's totally cool as well. So yeah, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you've gone this far, I really appreciate your attention. And uh, yeah, if you can, please like and subscribe so I can talk to more beautiful human beings like yourself. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next video.